Now, at least one reviewer has called Golden Boy Odette's masterpiece. Uh, I, I, how involved do you get in uh, looking into the history of something that you're working on? Uh, do you know whether it was considered that uh, a masterpiece at the time? It was his most successful play, as far as I know, that was performed, that the group performed on Broadway, that this was his most successful play at the time. And, you know, I've, of course, it's hard to say what is the greatest work by a particular artist, but I personally, of the plays of his that I know well, I, it's my favorite. I think it's just such a beautifully constructed play. But it's interesting that uh, Awaken Sing was revived a few times. In fact, Bart Scher, your director, did it uh, at, this, uh, at the LCT a few years ago. According to Wikipedia, I don't know whether you can trust Wikipedia. You can't. You can't. I'm, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> but the last time it was revived in New York City was 1952. Right. That's. A, I think that yeah. was that was when it was done on Broadway last. Yeah. It, I think it's been done off Broadway and other places uh, in and around New York. But in terms of a Broadway production, really, I think it's only been, we're the third Broadway production. It was the original in 37. Right. Uh, then again, where, where Garfield played... Uh, Joe in 53. Wasn't that directed by Odette's? Was the 52 production actually directed by Odette's? Right? That, I, that I don't know. Well, John, Garfield was in the original production as well, but in a different role, right? Right. Played, and then he played Joe, the, the boxer, in the, in the second. In the 53 or whatever. And then Sammy did. Davis Jr., of course, played it in the musical. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Which, <laughs> where, where they really changed the plot a lot. But there was also the, the movie, which made William Holden a star, also starring uh, Barbara Stanwyck. Uh, have you seen that film? You know, if I did see it, it was years and years ago. Um, I I don't remember it that well. I try not to look at uh, you know other productions of things or, or or films of things that I'm working on because I just want to kind of keep my my head clean. And the film is considerably different. They Odette's you know wrote the screenplay of the. For, of the play into the film, but it's very different. They took a lot of liberties and changed some things, and it feels a little bit more Hollywood than than the original play. So we have tried to stay in our own world of the the original text. And it's interesting that the musical with Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, he also worked on that, and that was updated to uh, address the civil rights issue because it was '64, and that was much in the news. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that one of the problems? with producing it more often is that it has such a large cast, 19 yeah. parts. Is it 19 parts or 19, 19 people? 19, we have 19 people. Yeah. That's a, that's so a huge consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I, people don't do it that often. It's just it's economically, it's not feasible. Uh, Lincoln Center has a different kind of economic structure, so they can they can kind of get away with it, but... Um, it means they pay you less. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to put it in those terms. I don't really do it for the money, of course. But um, uh, that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> what have you heard? <laughs> I heard that I, I, I turned down a part because it would mean a cut in pay. There you go. <laughs> but uh, still, 19, I, I guess, was more normal in... 1937, 38, when this play was produced, mm -hmm. or maybe because it was done um, with uh, a theater group that uh, Absolutely, yeah. was cooperative. I think, but I think it was more common then to to do larger cast pieces because uh, you know it was it was the expectation, and again the economics were different then, and. Um, and it was more common also to have a, a full-length three-act right. play with two intermissions. It's nearly three hours long. And I just feel like the scope of storytelling has started to get slightly smaller in certain cases in terms of you know how, how much it costs to put on a play. It's kind of crazy. And people's but, attention spans. Yeah. And the, fact, yeah, yeah there's a that well, could it be, <laughs> you know, I, I've, I've thought about this. Could it really have been shortened? Uh, I'm, uh, maybe you could have broke, taken... Ended, you know, not had one of the breaks, one of the intermissions, but this is a pretty tight play, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think that, you know, I mean, I imagine some people might, but it would it would harm it. Mm. I mean, I think he's written it so specifically, you know, as a three, you know, in, in the way he wrote it, you know, it's scored in a way that, like, I just think if he did it any other way, we just it would just wouldn't be the same. It's interesting, I think. <laughs> Because we see it as this long, you know, two intermissions, and that's unusual. 
<clears throat> you need those breaks? A, see as a, oh, I, I feel like I feel like the audience needs those breaks. Mm -hmm. We certainly could do a pause, I think, between Act Two and Act Three, but but I'm I'm glad that they decided to do the second intermission. I think it gives the audience a chance to just sort of sit with themselves, process what they've seen. Um, I see this as a play that was written on so many levels. It it, it can be uh, interpreted and received. And I uh, I mean I've been working on it now. We've been working on it for two and a half months, and I'm still making huge discoveries all the time and um, yeah. I can only imagine that the audience is 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 processing too